So another week of lockdown and another three plants for you to look at and enjoy, I hope. Uh, this is Catalpa ducloxii. Uh, and again, I'm afraid the botanists have been playing around with the name. We used to call this Catalpa fargesii form ducloxii. And today I'm afraid that the uh, botanists have decreed that its now proper name is Catalpa bungii ducloxii group. But I think you'll all agree that it's probably easier just to call it Catalpa ducloxii. This was a, a plant first discovered and introduced into the UK in 1904 by Ernest Wilson. It's said to be a fairly shy flowerer, but this 25 year old plant is possibly disproving that. There are other examples in the garden here where there is a bit more purple in the flower and perhaps the yellow centre to the flower is a little bit more pronounced. Uh, but it's an exceptional plant um, at this time of the year. Um, normally I think you'd find it out in the first week of July, but this year it's particularly early. Certainly you wouldn't expect the other more widely grown forms of Catalpa, like Catalpa bignonioides, uh, to be out until quite a bit later in the summer. So our second um, target today is Podocarpus elongatus blue chip. And it's an astonishing evergreen or coniferous tree which has this absolutely gorgeous light blue new growth. And I first saw this plant uh, growing in a seaside garden near Lymington where it wasn't looking terribly well and where the owner said that he didn't think it would really survive in our climate because it uh, grows in Africa and he didn't really think it would take, to, take even to Cornwall. But this plant has been growing here now for a good 20 years. It's developing quite a nice large trunk and every spring season we get this extraordinary display of very light blue new growth. And as podocarpuses go, uh, there are many podocarpuses that have attractive new growth, but I think this is probably one of the best. And the astonishing thing that's happening this year is that when we look closely, we can see that each stem of new growth, what might be called flowers, but actually they're strobuli, uh, which are the equivalent of uh, coniferous flowers or podocarpus flowers, and each little wire, each little growth is actually in two parts. And that is what is going to form the podocarp fruit, which is a bit like um, a, a yew berry, but the, the end bit will contain the seed and the, what will become very red and fleshy uh, is the back bit. And if you knew a bit more about Greek than I did, uh, the word podo and the word carp in Greek, Greek mean exactly what <laughs> that is going to grow into. Um, I've never seen podocarps forming on this uh, small tree before. Um, I wouldn't expect the podocarps to be ripe until maybe September or October. And it'd be interesting to come back then and see whether they have matured or whether they've dropped off because it's been too dry and whether they are actually going to be a fleshy red colour because since I've never seen them before I don't actually know quite what to expect. But if they do all produce a fleshy red colour isn't that going to look fantastic set against this light brew foliage. This podocarpus is easy enough to propagate and we've been selling it in the nursery for quite a few years. You simply need to break off a piece of new growth and go back to the start of where the new growth occurred and nip off the lower, um, lower leaves and, uh, and 
Then dip that in hormone rooting powder and stick that in the uh, propagating bench, in the mist bench with a bit of bottom heat and after six months or so hopefully that would root into a young plant. Uh, they root quite easily and uh, this has been in the Bernkus catalogue for quite some time although people who haven't ever seen it growing as it grows here perhaps won't appreciate what an attractive thing it is. I don't think it would probably grow away from a coastal location um, but it's certainly done very well here. Uh, today our third plant is a even bigger contrast to the other two which we've seen before. And this is the paper mulberry, or to give it its proper Latin name, Brusinetia papiofera. And what you're looking at, um, they look a bit like seeds, but those are actually the female flowers on the female tree. Uh, a male uh, Brusinetia would have catkins that would hang down as they want a hazel, but the female, uh, female tree, which this is, produces these extraordinary flowers with these long purplish mauve hairs coming off them. And those are actually the stigmas, which are extraneous or external to the flower itself. And if there was a, a male plant around and about, which there isn't, uh, those stigmas would get fertilized and come the autumn we'd have a orangey red fruit. A bit like a mulberry fruit which is where the plant actually gets its name from. And if you look at the leaf you and, and didn't actually see the, these extraordinary flowers you probably wouldn't think, that, that, well if you had to guess what it was I think you might well guess mulberry. But these are small trees and there, are, there used to be three, but sadly the male one died. They were planted in 1991 and they've grown into small spreading trees. I suppose they're 20, 25 feet tall. And when you look up into them, you see this sort of glistening purple effect from these hundreds and hundreds of extraordinarily rounded and hairy uh, flower capsules. Now this plant grows in, in, in the Far East, it's actually naturalized itself in, in the US. <coughs> in Japan the bark is used uh, to make paper, uh, but it's quite a widely uh, known plant and it certainly does produce fruits which have medicinal purposes as well as being eaten, but I'm afraid without a male to sit alongside our two plants here we're rather out of luck on the fruits front. So sometimes flowers on unusual trees can be shatteringly beautiful from even from a distance. Here you've got to come close to see something very odd and, and very peculiar in nature in a genus and species of plant which is not, not as well known as it should be and great fun it is too. That's, an, yeah, that's another week's worth of little, little snippets for you. I hope I won't have to do too many more of these, but we still await the government's decisions on ending lockdown properly.